people just can't sit still. We want everything at once to conquer space, to explore the depths of the sea, and of course to penetrate the depths of the Earth. What we haven't tried is just to travel to the Earth's core. Before the invention of special drilling rigs, people tried to dig tunnels. Then we drilled wells, both on land and underwater. But alas, people could not penetrate deeper than 12.3 kilometers, or 7.6 miles. Today, we'll take a different approach. So wear a protective suit. We're going to the crater of a volcano. I suggest we throw in a tungsten ball and see what happens. Will it be able to go through the Earth's crust and hit directly on the solid core of our planet? Before we begin our scientific experiment, you probably want to ask, why is the ball made of tungsten and not another metal? The answer is very simple. It's the most refractory metal in the world. Its melting point is 3,422 degrees Celsius. That's 6,192 Fahrenheit. And in the vent of a volcano, and even underground, it's hellishly hot. Therefore, there simply aren't any other candidates. As you know, there are volcanoes on our planet both on land and underwater. And it's precisely the underwater ones that have the largest and most powerful eruptions in terms of force. But throwing heavy objects underwater isn't a good idea. Therefore, any active volcano is suitable as long as it's on land. Perhaps we can do without exact names and geometries for the sake of the experiment. Well, are you ready? One, two, three, throw it! The density of tungsten is almost seven times greater than the density of lava, so the ball begins to sink easily. But if you think that it'll be like an object thrown into the water, then you're going to be disappointed. Lava isn't like water. It's nearly three times denser than water, and its viscosity may be a million times higher. It follows that our ball will not instantly go under the lava. It will slowly sink lower and lower until it's completely hidden from view. I immediately recall the final moments of famous films. For example, in the final scene of The Lord of the Rings, Gollum falls into the lava of the volcano Orodruin. A frail hobbit with translucent skin in real life would float on the surface of a hot stream slowly burning. And the golden ring of omnipotence would float somewhere nearby. In the film, he, along with his jewelry, almost instantly went under the lava as if it were water. But as for the Terminator, no questions. It was made of metal and had a much greater density than Gollum. Therefore, he quite realistically drowned in a boiling lava cauldron. But back to our tungsten ball. It's already in the volcanic vent and slowly sinking to the bottom. It's not lava that boils here, but magma, the temperature of which can reach 1300 degrees Celsius or 2400 Fahrenheit. But where did the lava go? The fact is that magma is lava. The difference is only in the location of the substance. That molten rock inside the volcano is magma. If it comes to the surface and continues to flow like a liquid, then this phenomenon is called lava. By its consistency, magma is different. It can be liquid like stock and as thick as putty. It must be seething and hissing like soda as a large amount of gas is dissolved in it. But really, what magma is there inside the volcano, no one knows. No one has ever seen it. Only a few times in history has anyone managed to get to magma using drilling rigs. However, it hasn't yet been studied. But maybe things will change with the construction of the International Magma Observatory, for which a location has been chosen. It's the volcano Krafla in Iceland. Scientists hope that as a result of studying magma, an answer will be found to the main question, how to control volcanic eruptions. And who knows, maybe then we'll be able to subdue one of the most unpredictable elements of nature. Meanwhile, our ball continues on its path, 
moving lower and lower down the mouth of the volcano. What awaits it at the bottom of the fire-breathing monster? Actually, nothing unusual. The volcano vent connects to the magma chamber. This is sort of an underground tank. What's in it is easy to guess. It's here that a volcanic eruption arises. And this happens quite simply. The pressure in the magma chamber becomes too great, and the gases in the magma begin to rise rapidly, pushing it out. This process is very similar to shaking a soda bottle. If the cap doesn't hold well, the gases force it to pop off under pressure, and the contents fly in all directions. I think you can imagine what awaits our tungsten ball if it's involved in this process. It will instantly be knocked out of the volcano crater. And then it will turn into a cannonball. But there's another fate that might await this ball. This will happen if it's thrown into the mouth of the largest volcano on Earth, Mauna Loa in Hawaii, or any other shield volcano. Most likely, magma streams from the chamber will lift it up, and together with the lava, it will float smoothly in an unpredictable direction. The fact is that eruptions of such volcanoes are usually not explosive and are more like a lava flood. Therefore, the appearance of the ball won't be so spectacular. It turns out that the ball can't go beyond this point. Any subject will be forcefully pushed back by a powerful element of nature. Even if we ignore this enormous pressure, our ball will still be stopped. It simply won't be able to pass through the harder, lower layers of the mantle. And the temperature will clearly limit the progress of our subject. As you approach the center of the Earth, it will get hotter and hotter. And on the border with the core, the temperature can go up to 4,000 degrees Celsius. That's 7,230 Fahrenheit. This means that, at best, only a pair of hot drops of tungsten will reach the outer core of the Earth. The turbulent ocean of liquid metal, penetrated by magnetic and electric fields, will forever absorb the remnants of the ball. Too bad the volcano isn't a tunnel through which you can get directly to the center of the Earth. But just wait a while. Nothing prevents us from imagining that we can do it, and the volcano is really connected by some miracle of engineering with the core of the Earth. Let's put aside the incredible temperature in the depths of our planet, the tremendous pressure that will crush any object in a matter of seconds, and other physical properties. In this case, it won't be difficult for our tungsten ball to sink below the Earth's crust and move along the mantle ever closer to our grand goal. But even here, we are destined for failure. Halfway to the core, the ball will start to move sideways. Its speed will be about 2,400 kilometers an hour, or 1,491 miles an hour faster than the walls of the tunnel itself. After all, we can't turn off the Earth's rotation. At such an incredible speed, the ball simply can't move further down. It would fight endlessly against the walls of the tunnel, trying with all its might to punch them until it turns into a flattened disk and then finally becomes a puddle. The ball's journey seems very exciting, but I wouldn't envy it. How much has it suffered in today's video? It's great that in the 21st century, experiments can be carried out virtually and no one throws anything into volcanoes. We shouldn't clog them even in the name of science. After all, they have an impact on the climate of our planet. Due to volcanic eruptions, atmospheric haze is formed from ash particles ejected into the troposphere and stratosphere. Small particles of ash reduce the sunlight reaching the surface of the Earth. Thus, the average temperature on our planet falls. This is surprising, but the fire-breathing giants striving to destroy everything in their path are natural regulators of Earth's climate. Therefore, a volley of tungsten directly from the mouth of a volcano is not a good idea. And what do you think? Will humans soon be able to control volcanic eruptions? Write in the comments. And if you like this thought experiment, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.